Okay, so once again, we have this uh, hydrocarbon problem that we've been dealing with in the past couple of videos. Um, up till now, we've used the Fenske equation to find the minimum number of stages, which was equal to 4.83. We also use the Fenske equation to found the splits of the non-key components. As you can see here, um, the flow rates of pentane and hexane in your bottoms and distillate, they were found using the Fenske equation once the minimum number of stages were found. Moving on, once we had the splits, we were able to use the Underwood equation to find the minimum reflux ratio which was equal to 0.747 all right so now uh, when you're operating at minimum number of stages your reflux ratio is total as an infinite reflux ratio and when you're operating at minimum reflux ratio the number of stages is gonna go to infinity so you have to decide and up you have to decide an optimum reflux ratio that's gonna be economically feasible as you increase the reflux ratio number of stages go go down but your column becomes wider so a good rule of thumb is to use between 1.2 times minimum to 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio that you've calculated. Again, this is more of an op uh, optimization problem that once you have a base design, you have to like optimize, but this range right here between 1.2 to 1.5 is a good place to start. Keep in mind it's 1.2 times the minimum reflux ratio, not the actual number. Now, once you have specified a min uh, the operating reflux ratio, let's say we specify for our purpose the operating reflux ratio to be 1.2 times the minimum reflux ratio which in our case would be 1.2 times 0 0.747 and that comes out to be hold on i got my calculator here 1.2 times 747 0. 8964 Okay, so now once you have the operating reflux ratio you can use the Gilliland correlation uh, To find the theoretical number of trays uh, the theoretical number of stages associated with that reflux ratio now the Gilliland correlation as I've shown here uh, It's a graphical correlation that's based on experimental data there are other experimental data that you can use to find the number of theoretical stages but this one's the most popular so for our purpose we have the uh, x-axis uh, like once you know the value of the x-axis you can read off the y-axis and find the number of theoretical stages so let's say for our case our x-axis is going to be r minus r min over r plus 1 which turns out to be 0 0.8964 minus 0 0.747 over 0 0.8964 plus 1 which turns out to be give me a second 0. Point, Okay, that turns out to be 0 0.079. So close to, I'm going to round that up to 0 0.08. Okay, so now let's read that graph. So the uh, it's a log-log graph. So the intervals keep, uh, keep shrinking as you move towards the next order of magnitude. So 0 0.02 right here, 0 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 right on this line okay so and if we read that horizontally I'm trying to do this with as much accuracy as I can so this comes out to be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 so closer to 0 0.06 so I'm gonna go with 
the this value I'm gonna pick <clears throat> 0.58 keep in mind it's a log log graph so uh, like as you keep going closer to the uh, like this might look halfway here but it's not actually halfway it's like closer towards the next um, increment okay so if our vertical axis reads 0 0.48 we can find the number of theoretical stages and t minus minimum number of stages which was 4.83 whoops divided by nt plus 1 and once you solve this equation I'm gonna do this real quick it should come out to Just give me one second. Here we go. Okay. All right. This comes out to be the number comes out to be twelve point nine. So basically, you can round it up to thirteen stages, thirteen theoretical stages. So we did this problem using the graphical correlation. There are other, uh, there are authors that have tried to come up with an equation for this uh, curve right here. Um, one of the equations that I found was y equals 1 minus exponent 1.49 plus 0.315 x minus 1.805 over x to the power 0.1, where x is once again your r minus r min over r plus one and y is once again number of trays minus number of minimum stages over number of stages plus one so if i use this correlate if i use this equation i found the number of theoretical stages to be around 11 Now, which one of these is more accurate? Again, it should be kept in mind that both of like this entire method is a very sh is a shortcut method, and this is just an initial guess for more rigorous methods. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. You use the for a multi-component distillation, you use the Fensky to find the minimum number of stages. You use the Fensky to find the splits of your non-key components. Then you use the Underwood equations to find the minimum reflux ratio. You choose an operating reflux ratio, which we chose to be 1.2 times the minimum reflux ratio. And then based on the uh, Gillen correlation, you find the theoretical number of stages. So the, ac like, uh, the accuracy of the shortcut method is like, it, it should be, uh, it should not be taken as the uh, final design this this should be an initial guess to a more rigorous model which um, is usually done using some form of some process simulator like Aspen so yeah Fensky Underwood Gillen we did it